The Five Nights at Freddy's movie is finally here, and it was... Uh... It was... It was, uh... You've just clicked on a video called FNAF Movie Spoilers. This video will contain every spoiler for the entire FNAF movie. You have been warned, and you are responsible if you choose to continue watching. <laughs> Things hadn't been easy for Michael Schmidt. When he was just a child, his family went on a camping trip, and tragically, his younger brother Garrett was abducted by a strange man, never to be seen again. Years later, both Michael's parents are completely out of the picture, and the young man struggles to make ends meet and care for his younger sister, Abby. While working at his job at the mall, Michael sees a man that he believes to be harassing a child. Being a hero, Michael goes and kicks his ass. Unfortunately, it turns out that the man was actually the kid's father or something. It had all been a misunderstanding. In the wake of his violent outburst against the man, Michael is promptly fired, and as a result, he meets with Steve Raglan, a job counselor who informs him about a security guard opening at the long-abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Why anyone would need a night security guard at an abandoned pizzeria is beyond me. I mean, at that point, why not have a day security guard? Why not have 24-hour security? Michael has a dream in which he relives his brother Garrett's abduction. Clearly, the memory still haunts him. Michael regrets his inability to save his brother, and he struggled in his personal and professional life as a result. Even worse, Michael's evil aunt, who smells like cigarettes, feels like he's an inadequate guardian for his young sister Abby. She thinks that she ought to be raising the young, potentially special needs child. You know, it it's ambiguous. While Abby attends school, Michael, his evil aunt who smells like cigarettes, and her bumbling fat lawyer meet. Their aunt explains that she wants custody of Abby because Michael kinda sucks and can't hold down a job and has a habit of beating people up. Michael refuses. Having lost his brother Garrett, he's grown incredibly attached to Abby, his only remaining family, and he isn't going to give her to his horrible aunt. Tragically though, she and her lawyer threaten to take the matter to the courts, jeopardizing Michael's custody of Abby. Afterwards, Abby's teacher points out to Michael that he's always at the center of his sister's drawings. He's obviously important to her, and she definitely doesn't want to go live with her evil aunt. Abby's teacher convinces Michael that he needs to hold down a job. If he doesn't, the courts may very well turn his sister over to his aunt. Desperate and with nowhere else to turn, Michael contacts Steve Raglan about the job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. As Michael arrives at the pizzeria, he gets a lay of the land before heading back to the security office. Michael begins to flip through the security cameras when out of the corner of his eye, he spots a VHS tape with his name written on it. Upon playing it, he discovers that it's a Fazbear Entertainment training tape, though it glitches out before we can actually see the animatronics perform. Afterwards, Michael walks through the pizzeria, which looks cool. He makes note of the large, childish illustrations that adorn the walls, paying particular attention to one depicting a large yellow rabbit cheerfully holding the hands of five children. Upon reaching the main stage, Michael encounters the animatronics, being startled by Bonnie. He leans behind the curtain and sees Chica and Freddy. All of them are dormant, they just stand there. While Michael works, his friend Max stays behind at his place, babysitting Abby. Michael can't afford to pay her for this, but she does it anyway, as a favor to him. However, she and her boyfriend, who kinda sucks, are called up to a diner or something to meet with Michael's evil aunt and her lawyer. Matt Pat shows up dressed as a waiter, because he's playing a waiter, and he takes their order and leaves. Max's boyfriend is all pissed about Michael having her watch Abby for free, which the evil aunt and her lawyer use as leverage. She convinces them to help her sabotage Michael's new security job by breaking into Freddy's after his shift and trashing the place. Again, this is why hiring only a night guard for an abandoned location makes no sense. On his second night at Freddy's, Michael falls asleep in the office and has a bizarre, lucid dream. He finds himself in the park his brother Garrett was abducted in all those years ago. However, he isn't alone. Five strange children encircle and stare at him before sprinting off in separate directions. Michael gives chase, but he can't catch them. During his pursuit, one of the ghost children scratches his hand, jolting Michael awake. However, upon coming to, he looks down at his hand and sees that it's wounded in real life. Shortly after awakening, Michael hears someone arriving at Freddy's. Officer Vanessa. We must be new security guard. Can I uh, help you, officer? Vanessa introduces Michael to the animatronics, pressing the showtime button and activating the Freddy Fazbear band. For the first time since the cold open, we finally get to see Freddy and his friends. Then, the animatronics perform. Bonnie's guitar, like, sparks all over the place every time he strums, but, like, nothing really happens, and afterwards, everyone goes home. 
However, unbeknownst to Michael and Vanessa, Max, her boyfriend, and these two other guys had stalked them to Freddy's and they watched them leave. In an attempt to sabotage Michael's security guard position so that his evil aunt can get custody of Abby, they break into the pizzeria and trash the place, believing that it will result in Michael losing his job. However, the animatronics show up and kill them. <laughs> Now would be a good time to mention that Chica's cupcake is perhaps the most deadly animatronic in the film. It's ruthless. It can like fly through the air at people and f bite their faces off and shit. It's awesome. Eventually, Max finds herself alone, the last survivor, standing before Freddy. What the heck? As she walks closer, a child's voice calls out to her. Max continues to approach Freddy. The voice is coming from the animatronic bear. In the goriest scene of the entire film, Max pulls up a chair and goes to look into Freddy's mouth, searching for the source of the noise when suddenly a hand shoots out of it and grabs her. <coughs> then Freddy bites her head off. It basically looked like this. Was that the bite? It's bizarre, but like, it was pretty cool. We got a bite, so nice. While it hasn't been confirmed yet, the prevailing theory is that Freddy killed Max because she hated puppies and kittens and wasn't subscribed to Theft King. You don't hate puppies and kittens, do you? Subscribe to Theft King, unless you hate puppies and kittens. The next day, Vanessa shows up at Michael's house and informs him that she arrived at the pizzeria after his shift to find the place trashed. She doesn't mention the mutilated bodies of his friends, who were surely discovered there. Instead, the two chat about dreams. Vanessa notices that Michael has been taking sleeping pills, and after confronting him about them and his strange dreams, she insists that he dispose of his medication, grabbing it and throwing it in the river. By the way, you should only stop taking prescribed medication if your doctor tells you to. Not some police girl you literally met the night before, but whatever. However, Michael's sister Abby overhears the two and realizes that Michael is working as a security guard at Freddy's and she begs to come with him to his next shift. This is convenient because unbeknownst to her, her babysitter Max is dead. On night three, the two arrive at Freddy's, and Michael makes Abby a blanket fort in the office for her to chill in while she draws. Unfortunately, Michael falls asleep again because he's apparently got f***ing narcolepsy or something, and he has another surreal dream involving his brother's kidnapping and the five ghost children. Michael asks the children if any of them know who took his brother from him, but they all run away once again. As Michael gives chase in his dream, Abby grows bored, leaves the pillow fort, and begins exploring the pizzeria. As Michael pursues the ghostly children, he actually manages to catch up to one of them, but as he does, he's awoken by a scream from Abby. Michael sprints to the party room to find all four animatronics surrounding Abby, who's screaming. This is the first time Michael has seen the animatronics doing anything abnormal. In terror, Michael grabs a chair and goes to throw down with the animatronics, but moments before he can, he realizes that Abby is laughing. As Michael stops short, Abby introduces him to Freddy and the gang as her new friends. Putting down the chair, Michael sits with Abby and the animatronics for a brief time, and they're just like totally friendly. Michael, Abby, Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, and Chica all just freaking chill for a little while. Then they go home. By night four, we have Michael, Abby, Vanessa, and all four animatronics just chilling. Like, they aren't a threat at all. They're all getting along great. While Abby is playing with the robots, Vanessa and Michael enter the back room and encounter a springlock suit with a circus baby head on it. Vanessa explains the mechanism behind the springlocks to Michael, but in the movie, they're basically just a big metal rib cage that impales you. It's kind of lame. Michael points out that Vanessa seems to know a lot about Freddy's, and also that she keeps showing up in the middle of the night and hanging out. Out there with them, which is sort of weird. Vanessa responds that she used to come to the place all the time as a kid. She has fond memories of it, and she seems to want to protect the place. She goes on to give Michael a crash course on the history of the pizzeria, explaining that back in the 80s, five kids vanished at Freddy's, never to be found again. The restaurant was shut down shortly after. Ironically, Abby of all people is the one who's like, so wait, the ghosts of the children are in the animatronics? And Michael is just like, yeah. It's pretty anticlimactic. The three of them put together that these five missing kids are obviously the same ones that Michael keeps encountering in his dreams, and they decide that perhaps the ghost dream children might know who kidnapped his brother Garrett. Why the spirits possessing the animatronics would know what happened to Michael's brother many years prior is unclear at this point, but whatever. Five Nights at Freddy's. The group decides that they need to go to sleep so that they can communicate with the spirits once again, and we're treated to a montage of Michael, Vanessa, Abby, and all four animatronics building a pillow fort. It's 
It, it's very strange. Afterwards, we cut to a scene of Michael, Abby, Vanessa, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy sitting in the pillow fort getting ready to go to sleep. I am not kidding. They have a slumber party with the animatronics inside the pizzeria. Furthermore, why did they even need to go through all this trouble? Michael falls asleep everywhere throughout the film, but suddenly the one time he needs to, they have to build a freaking pillow fort? If there was anything you wanted to see in the FNAF movie that didn't make it in, just remember, they had to cut it so that they could include the pillow fort montage. Duh. Upon falling asleep, Michael once again has a dream of his brother's kidnapping, but this time his brother Garrett isn't taken. He's just happily sitting there with his family. Michael exclaims that this isn't right, that this isn't what happened, and upon turning, he sees the five children again. This time, however, the one representing Golden Freddy speaks to him, asking if this is what he wants, to have been able to save his brother all those years ago, to have his brother Garrett back. Michael is like, yes, of course this is what I want. However, the Golden Freddy child insists that if he wants Garrett back, Michael will need to give them Abby. The implication is clear, that Abby would become another restless, haunted soul, potentially trapped in an animatronic forever. The next morning, Abby wakes up, but upon going into the kitchen, she sees her evil cigarette-smelling aunt. Abby starts to freak out, but Michael insists that they all just need to talk. However, in a rage, Abby returns to her room and begins scribbling Michael out of all of her drawings. Michael has realized that Freddy's is far too dangerous for Abby, and as a result, he insists that she stay at home with the evil aunt for night five. As Michael heads to work, we see the aunt sitting in their apartment when suddenly, Golden Freddy materializes and calls out to Abby. She sees both the animatronic and the child from Michael's dream standing in front of him. The boy explains to Abby that he's going to take her back to the pizzeria where they can like play forever and Abby is like, all right, bet, because she's stupid. As the two leave, Abby glances at the chair her aunt was sitting on and you can see her legs twisted and mangled and she's all like dead and stuff. Then the Golden Freddy ghost boy is like, let's go. The two call a taxi to Freddy's, which is driven by Corey Kenshin. To be honest though, it kind of feels like the entire reason that Michael suddenly leaves Abby with the evil aunt was to come up with an excuse to integrate Corey into the movie. You could cut out the whole thing and just have Abby show up to the pizzeria with Michael on night five and the plot would be completely unaffected. That said, it's not like I minded. Corey is actually quite a good actor. Unfortunately, Michael isn't having the easiest time at the restaurant. Without Abby to calm them, the animatronics are furious and are now stalking Michael and he gets knocked out and put in the saw trap thing, but he escapes. Unfortunately, at this very moment, Golden Freddy and Abby arrive and then Vanessa shows up and is like, we gotta save Abby and take down these animatronics because they've gone mad and they don't do well with electricity. At this point, Vanessa pulls out an electric cattle prod, and Michael pulls out a taser that he's had this entire time, apparently, and they split up to take down the animatronics. Michael uses a puddle of water and the taser to electrocute both Freddy and Bonnie at the same time, disabling them. However, at the same time, Chica leads Abby into the back room with the weird circus baby spring lock thing, and she tries to coax her into the deadly device. Before she can, though, Michael and Vanessa show up, and they tase Chica, saving Abby, who still thinks the animatronics are her friends, because she's stupid. Also, there's this part where Abby dives into the ball pit while Foxy stalks her, but nothing really comes of it. Eventually, the gang is reunited, and they go to flee the pizzeria, when suddenly they hear maniacal laughter, and sure enough, Springtrap appears. Springtrap chases them around for a while, but eventually he takes the mask off and we see that it's Steve Raglan from the beginning, who was actually William Afton the entire time. <gasps> and then Vanessa goes, Dad, no, revealing that she is Afton's daughter. Afton like screams, which somehow revives the animatronics that Michael and Vanessa had just tased moments before. I guess it's like Afton powers or whatever. Then Afton pulls out his knife and begins to approach Michael and Abby. Oh, also, Afton reveals that he was the one who killed Michael's brother Garrett all those years ago, and he says that now he's gonna kill Michael because it's like poetry or something. It doesn't make any sense. However, before he can do anything, Vanessa lunges at Afton to try and stop him, but he stabs her and kills her and she dies. That's it for Vanessa. While Afton is unceremoniously murdering his daughter, Michael speaks to Abby, who explains that the animatronics don't know that Afton did it, and that this is why they're, 
working with him or whatever. Abby gets her crayons and draws a picture of Afton in the yellow bunny suit, killing all the kids. The animatronics see this and somehow put together that Afton was actually the one who killed them and then they turn on him and they go to kill him. And then Afton is like, I created you, I made you what you are, you can't do this, ah, no. Then Chica's cupcake f flies through the air and bites into the spring trap suit tearing through it and revealing the spring lock mechanism inside, which proceeds to go off. It's honestly really anticlimactic. Presumably there's like a full metal rib cage that should impale Afton, but you only see like a few of them puncture him in a bit of blood while he's like, oh, as the animatronics watch. The four animatronics surround him and Foxy grabs Afton with his hook and drags him away. Also at one point he's like, I always come back or whatever. Then the pizzeria starts to collapse. Why does it start to collapse? F you, that's why. Michael and Abby hobble out of the building, escaping with their lives, leaving Vanessa crushed and buried beneath the rubble. Which is strange, because in the epilogue we see Vanessa at the hospital, unconscious but alive. Apparently, despite Afton stabbing her and a freaking building falling on her, she didn't die. Michael is there and holds her hand and says something nice or whatever. I don't know, he knew her for like a couple days, it's not that big a deal. Finally, Michael and Abby are back at home, eating together, and Abby is like, my friends will be lonely, we should go back, implying that she wants to go visit the animatronics at Freddy's again. In response, Michael gives her the stink eye and gives some ambiguous answer, potentially leaving open the possibility of a sequel. There ain't gonna be a sequel to this movie. The camera pans out and the credits roll as it plays the Living Tombstone's Five Nights at Freddy's 1 song. However, halfway through the credits, we get a scene of Afton, still trapped in the spring trap suit, sitting against a wall in one of the back rooms, convulsing. The child that represents Golden Freddy stands in the doorway and Afton reaches towards him, but the spirit coldly closes the door, leaving him there to burn for eternity. Or at least until the sequel that's totally gonna get made. If you're interested in a darker take on the FNAF movie, check out my recent video on Valix's FNAF movie VHS series. It's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. Falcon!